I'll be able to cut this off or not, but I haven't done a video in a long time, and I've had a lot of uh, dreams and words from God, but I have felt like pausing, <laughs> like I'm not supposed to share just yet, and then I read a Lana Vosser word that talked about really uh, lingering in the presence of God before you share things that He shows you, and really taking seriously His words. Uh, when He gives us dreams and words, we have to have a respect for the weightiness of that, and I think I get so excited that I'm just like ready to blurt it out, and that's typical of me, uh, but I'm trying to pause and seek the Lord because she also pointed out that when you spend more time with God on whatever word He's given you, he tends to unpack more meaning, and then it has the impact that he wants it to have. And there's a strategic timing as well. So there are things that I'm holding on to and praying on uh, to see if and when God wants me to release them. And sometimes they're different ones at different times, and they end up working together. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. But this I did feel led to share today, and I'll make it as fast as I can. I've got to go pick up my daughter from school. Uh, let me see where it's at. Okay, so the Lord was speaking to me about the Jordan River and how uh, I, he had me research, research and find out how that was really symbolic of transitions. In the Bible, of course, as they're going into the, the promise, they have to cross the Jordan River and all the activity that happened there. Jesus was baptized at the Jordan River, which is a, a transition in his life and purpose and ministry on earth. Uh, but also, one I hadn't thought of, and I wouldn't really, I don't think I was aware that it was at the Jordan River, was when Elisha and Elijah, whenever he went up into heaven and uh, he, his mantle fell on him. That was at the Jordan River as well. So that was a transition of um, anointing. It was, a, it was a transition of from life to death, but not really death because it was, he was taken directly into heaven, but a transition of this life and kingdom life and also a transition uh, of the mantle falling on Elisha. So it is a symbol of transition. And so the Lord's been speaking to me about how we are at our place of Jordan. But the reason he took me there was because of the story of the 12 stones. And you can go look that up. Uh, they, God had them make a memorial of 12 stones that they took from the Jordan River uh, to memorialize what God had done and all the ways that he had blessed them and, and created miracles for them to go into the promised land. Of course, the parting of the Red Sea and many things. Uh, so what the Lord was speaking to me about was just for us to pause and praise and remember this time in the wilderness, the way that the Lord has done miracles for us, the Red Seas He has parted for us, the healings He has given, etc. All the ways that He's provided uh, if you've been in a financial wilderness, I'm sure that you've seen God do what he's done for me, which is continually provide finances and needs being met in really cool and beautiful and miraculous ways. And it can be stressful waiting on God to line those things up uh, and not knowing how it's going to come at the last minute. But when it does, isn't it beautiful? Uh, and for me, I've got some short stories to share, and I want you guys to, at the end as well, I want you to listen because I bet you've got a lot of stories of your time in the wilderness where the Lord has delivered and given you your own Red Sea moments. And I want you to pause and memorialize those and share them. And I have an idea of a way that we can do that, so hold on to the end. And I want your comments of whether or not you think it's a good idea, but um, here's where I'm going to go with that. I know I'm jumping around, but I'm praying the Lord will speak through it. When we were in the wilderness, we needed to be made aware of the fact that it's not our power and our might that makes things happen. You know, one thing that the Lord was showing me is in Deuteronomy 8, he says, remember the Lord your God, that it's he that gives power to get wealth. So when you go through a wilderness season and you can't make things happen on your own, you are continually and repeatedly made aware of the fact that everything we have comes from God. And in my case, I've had multiple chronic illnesses, botched surgeries, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, so that, you know, all that I worked for, for a degree and to work, and I've been a hard worker my whole life, that, it didn't matter what I had, what ability I had that way to create wealth, I didn't have the physical ability to work full time, and so I have struggled. So the Lord even has caused me to remember that any of us, and for whenever I get better as well, it's not our own might that makes us able to even work and create wealth. It's still a gift from the Lord. 
Uh, and so <laughs> that's something we just need to remember that everything he's done for us in this wilderness, it's been his hand, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. And so he wants us to remember that when the manna stops, all these ways God provides in the wilderness we don't need to think that we're getting our needs met by our own hands and forget God once we're into the promised land. That will keep us from getting pride and forgetting the Lord. But also one thing he showed me that really blew my mind is he also showed me that we are no longer slaves. Now before they were in the wilderness, they were slaves. The Israelites were slaves. And that slave mentality is something they carried even into the wilderness because at one point they said it'd be better if we were back in Egypt. We could work. At least we would be able to, to, to earn our way and work enough as slaves to be able to eat certain things there and know that it's, it's coming on a daily basis because we did what we we're supposed to do to make it happen. And the truth is, is that sometimes working for things and having a slave mentality is easier, quote unquote, for us than just trusting God, just having faith. But in uh, the New Testament, there's a case where they're asking Jesus, what do we need to do to do the works of the Lord, to do these miracles? And he said, the work that I'll have you do is to believe. So believing and having that faith and looking to your Father to provide and to make things happen is actually more valuable in the kingdom of God than all of our effort and work. So the Lord has taken us through this wilderness to break off that slave mentality so don't take that into your promise. And one way that you could take it into your promise is that when you get there, even though it's God that got you there, you could have this mentality that you better do everything right to make it work. You better, you better, and you can have a fearfulness. God doesn't want you to have that fearfulness. That's a slave mentality. To be afraid that you could do something that could mess it up. He doesn't want us to take that fear. He wants us, we're going in through faith. When we get there, we're going to maintain it through faith and from the hand of the Father. Also, um, let's see what the last part I had on that. Our tendency in the promised land could be to go back into a work or slave mentality, but he has given us rest. Our relationship is based on faith and realizing that he is our Father, willing to give us all things. We will till the new land. We will harvest it. There is some effort. But it's not that work-slave mentality. It's something we can do with peace and rest and faith and relationship with our Father. So when we work, then we're not working as a slave. We are working as a child of who owns the land, uh, who owns the promised land that he's taking us into. So don't work to keep or maintain your promise. Have faith and focus on your relationship with your Father, and that will maintain and keep your promise. Now back to the 12 stones. Um, pause. I want us all to pause before we enter in and remember the miracles and the signs and the blessings and the dreams and the provision and the blessings that he has given us in the wilderness because that's going to give us the faith to go in and that's going to keep us focused on that relationship once we get there because it would be, it wouldn't do any good you know, to what gain the kingdom and lose our soul, not quite the same thing, but to gain the promise and lose our relationship and our peace and our faith that we've gained in this time. So I think that it's important that we have our own 12 stones memorial by remembering things that the Lord has done for us in beautiful ways. And I'm going to share a few. I had quite a few written down to share, but I may save some of them for later and also I'm afraid I'm going to run out of time and out of video. So uh, let's see here. Okay, so my shoes. You remember, I don't know if some of you have watched, I had these shoes. They're the only ones I could wear that didn't hurt my feet or throw my joints out of, out of joint, which is a long story having to do with my health situation. And I was going for a walk for exercise when I was able, and I saw this down the path a rainbow coming across a pond, and I was just enamored because God keeps using these rainbows as a sign of his promises to me personally through dreams and all sorts of things, but he keeps letting me see rainbows in certain ways as well. So I'm enamored, I go, I'm going so close, I'm looking at the color, I'm so caught up in it, I step all the way down to the pond, not thinking that mud <laughs> near the, the pond and the fountain, and my feet sunk down into the mud. My shoe got so far stuck in, I had to yank my ankle out with my arms. One of my shoes was stuck down in the mud. I had to dig it out. It was filled with mud. There was no way to fix it. They were already cracking and old on the inside and the insole. 
there was no recovery. And so the Lord kept speaking to me about my transition shoes and then my new shoes for the promise because that's very symbolic too, you know. And how in the wilderness their shoes didn't wear out, but they didn't get anything new. And the Lord was saying, it's time for you to get rid of your wilderness shoes and walk into your promise. So uh, the Lord, what he did, he provided finances for me. I don't have a lot of extra, I don't have extra <laughs> until God gives it. Uh, and a friend sent me money to do several things that were great needs at that time uh, to maintain our car, uh, to pay bills that were past due, that were to keep things from being shut off. And there was enough money left over for shoes. So I went on this big hunt for them. When I finally found the right shoes, it was so beautiful. They were these Skechers, and I've got a video about that as well. And on the box it says, step into joy, because they're slip-ons. You step into them. And it also says, go like never before. They're performance shoes, it says. And mine before were not performance shoes. I've never really had a lot of athletic shoes. And it was so symbolic of God saying, you're going to step into joy with these shoes. And, and you're going to go like never before. Even the, the words on the box were prophetic. But that's one way that God met my need. Well, the shoes I'd lost were a little dressier. So I could wear them with dresses, even though they're not quite dress shoes. Skechers, not so much. So I've been looking for something I could wear with dress clothes to church, things like that. Couldn't find anything. Didn't have the money either way. A friend had seen where I had liked the page or commented on Born Brand Shoes because that's what my shoes were before. They were Born Brand. It's a really nice brand, but they're very good if you need like, you know, like orthotics or anything like that. Um, they're not, but they're close. So she randomly messaged me and said, you know, I've got two pairs of Born Brand Shoes that I haven't worn in 15 years. I wore them when I was pregnant with my first child. I've got a black pair and a brown pair. Would you like them? And I said, I'd love to try them. They happen to be close to my size. Lo and behold, she didn't find the brown pair. She found the black. She showed up and brought them to me. It was the same pair of shoes. It was the same shoes I wore, but they're brand new. She barely even worn them. So God brought me back the same pair of shoes. He did it. I couldn't get it on my own. He brought them. They're born brand. So born died in the mud in the fountain pond there the the, font, the, the pond of promise with the, with the rainbow and then now reborn because it's born brand and i got it again brand new the, the odds what are the odds of the exact same pair of shoes being given to me they're not common and they're a 15 year old shoe she just happened to have it and when i got mine they were used so, lo and behold, that just blew my mind. It, it, to me, that's like a confirmation of resurrection. There are things I've lost that God said he's going to resurrect. They were dead, but he's going to bring them back. And that was a confirmation of resurrection in these promises and things God's given me. And it was just full circle and beautiful. But that's one way that God has blown my mind and done wonderful things for me. Uh, recently... Uh, a friend sent PayPal, PayPal and Amazon credit that paid for Christmas gifts for me and my family and my daughter, health supplements that I couldn't afford to buy, that I require. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, my car was broke, tore down for six weeks. Church family came to fix it six weeks later. The night they went to fix it and it started, the moment it started again and was running, a rainbow formed, I guess a prism or whatever of light on the front of the car. The next day it tore up again and needed to be boosted off. My friend came. We worked on it forever. The moment it finally started again, another prism or rainbow formed on the car. I could share pictures someday I'll show you. Just promises all over the place and God's saying, I have you. I've got you. But you know it's a set time as well and there had to be the perfect timing for that to happen. Uh, this sounds silly, but I needed some things from around the house, and it was really, really tight financially. It is tight financially. Uh, and so I needed, like, trash bags and a few things that I didn't have. Uh, I happened to get a coupon in the mail from Walgreens specifically for $10 off of $10, so free, basically, of household products. It was a household product coupon. So I went to Walgreens. I got a bag of full of the things that I needed for the house that I didn't even have the money for specifically for that. Just ways God opens doors all the time. Some of these seem small. Oh, and a friend a friend sent me two things of my aloe, which I have to have. It's a long story, but they're big jugs of aloe. They were for my joints to keep them less likely to dislocate. Sent me two, two, double. 
Uh, the last thing I'll share is that I was needing melatonin to help me sleep. It also is a natural muscle relaxer and it helps with certain illnesses that I have. Well, I didn't have the money for that and I asked a friend if I could borrow some of hers. I went in her house to get it. I have uh, the code to go in and she told me I could. It turns out it had ingredients mixed in with it that I'm not, I can't take with my health issues. So I didn't have a way to even borrow. So I go to the store and I found it for half off. And I was going to use my, honestly, I had $10 left and it was five. I was going to use my five of my $10 to get this melatonin. I get to the register. It rings up wrong. It rings up 10. So I have to talk to people and they're trying to fix it. Two different people come. They can't repair it. I'm embarrassed. They can't fix it on the cash register. She takes it to another register and says, I'll fix it here. Just come over here. Well, by the time I got my groceries from that one place to the other, she said, here, and gave me the receipt. She said, I took it off, but you just keep it. She said, I'm going to write it up as a refund because that was their fault. That's not even that store's policy to do that. So I got my free melatonin. I know that seems small, but sometimes those small ones are just so personal and beautiful. They just touch your heart. But the good thing is, as I told her, I said, you're an answer to prayer. I said, what a blessing. And I was sort of, you know, bragging on God because it just oozes out of you. And uh, she started fussing about a new manager coming that's going to change her schedule. She's like, well, I'll take care of you while I'm here, but I may not be here tomorrow. And I said, why? And she shared. And I said, well, let's just pray. I said, I'm going to pray that you have favor with this manager and you will keep the schedule you want. She said, I'd appreciate that. And I said, I'll do it now. And I didn't even wait for permission because she seemed open to it. And on the spot, I prayed that. And she just exhaled and sighed and said, thank you. I needed that. And I said, I need that every day. So, you know, I could have had that need already met. You know, it'd be better to go through life, in my opinion, having enough money for melatonin and these things. But the Lord is using my weakness and my lack to put me in the pathway of people that I wouldn't be in their pathway otherwise and maybe make me vulnerable in their presence so that I will share things or need them or connect on a different level. Uh, and then in my relief of getting the need met and, and me praising God for it, expose them to the way the Lord works and open the door to to pray for them for their needs. Because, you know, sometimes when you're open about your own needs and your own emotions, it kind of gives permission to someone else to open up about their own. And it just opens a door, you know, and the Lord gets in there. So what I was thinking, though, is that I know it went really fast. Um, I was thinking about starting a page called Look What God Just Did. And it being like a Facebook page, and I could moderate it or whatever, uh, or we could even have several moderators. doesn't matter to me at all. But not even a group, not a group, because I want it to be not private. I want it to be public so that when you all comment on this or you share what the Lord has done, people on your newsfeed will see this. And I don't want anything else on the page except, hey, look what God just did. And it could be stories like mine of small things. It could be huge things. It could be healings. It could be how God speaks to you as well. If it's some big thing that was just very clear and a huge confirmation, but particularly blessings and ways that he opens doors, because you know what? He's about to do some huge things for us. And I know he's going to do them in front of all of our friends and family and even enemies. But what if we had a little page ready to go? What if we prepared and we had that already set up so that as your promises come through, it may be smaller things now, who knows, until they get here that we praise the Lord for. But when they come in, can you imagine posting on that and people seeing just because you've commented on it and it goes across their newsfeed and they see the Lord and all that he's done for you? I think it'd be a wonderful idea. Let me know if you're interested and comment below. Uh, you can share this video if you want to. And I'm sorry I talked so fast, uh, but I got to pick up my kid. So praise the Lord. Let's have our 12 stones. I feel like there was one more thing I was going to say. Our 12 stones to remember the Lord. There were a whole lot more things that I could have shared. Um, so many more. But if we start the page, I'll share them there. Just let me know what you think. Thank you.